My name is Jared Tellian. I work for Robjack Corporation. I'm an applications engineer and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, successful machining of composites. So there are many different composites out there and uh, not two were created equal. There's different types of composites. There's random fibers, pre-pregs, vacuum bags and inter intermediate layers with different type of matrices and metals. So the first thing you want to look at is, uh, is your fixturing. You need to have very rigid fixturing in your, in your tooling uh, or else you'll end up breaking tools and getting very poor uh, uh, consistency in the finish. Uh, the most common is to have a vacuum table. It holds everything down and, and it keeps everything very rigid. If you have a vacuum table but the part doesn't necessarily match exactly, you can either tape down your part, you can use sandbags, anything to dampen that vibration because the tools you're going to be using are very hard but they're also very brittle. So basically there's, there's three types of tools. Uh, uh, you're going to either be doing routing, uh, profiling, or you're going to be drilling. So there's, there's diamond coated drills, there's PCD drills, PCD routers, carbide end mills or routers. Uh, there's also diamond coated routers and PCD routers. So what you want to do is balance the shock resistance versus your wear resistance. You'll get very good shock resistance with, say, a carbide tool compared to something that's very hard like a diamond coated tool. Uh, in the middle is your PCD. It has very good shock resistance, but then again, not as, not as good as a solid carbide. And then you want to look at also your wear resistance capabilities, where a diamond coated or a PCD will give you very good wear resistance. However, a straight solid carbide tool has poor wear resistance, but you know it'll handle a lot of uh, vibrations and whatnot. But primarily, you want to make your fixturing as rigid as possible. So first, we'll talk about drilling. Uh, what you want to do is, the best tool to use is a diamond coated drill. Uh, you'll get the best tool life. You have very good geometries in your drill. You can put uh, like an elliptical type of geometry on there that'll prevent uh, the breakthrough when you go through the part. A regular drill point, say if you got just a solid carbide drill off the shelf from somebody, they just have like different angles on there and you'll get breakthrough. So you almost want to uh, and, and you'll see some of these tools and we have different parts here on the back is where you're going to be breaking through and, and that's not good so here you can see all these holes are very clean and none of them have exploded out. Another tool you can use which is, is equally as, as, as good is a PCD drill. Uh, you'll also get very good tool life with that. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive than a diamond coated uh, drill however you can resharpen a PCD drill where you can't resharpen a diamond coated drill. Anything that's diamond coated, you use it. Once it wears out, eventually it'll wear out. Uh, you, you have to toss it, you can't resharpen it. So here's a video on, uh, on cutting. Uh, we're going to be using the PCD drill. And what I want you to, to see is we're actually making chips when we, when we cut through the part. It's not sitting there and grinding away. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, is you want to create a chip. You don't want to create dust. If you create dust, you're going too slow and you just pre-wear the tool out and you'll be buying more tools in the long run. So this is uh, going 233 surface feet at uh, 21 inches a minute in the plunge. So you'll see the chips being created and nothing's really exploding through as, as the tool goes through the part. It's 
so and that was just like a part like this one here. All right, so the next uh, way you can use a tool is by routing, and that's kind of very common, is to do a profile cut. Uh, what you want to do is, is like, then again, you also want to make sure your fixed string is very rigid. Um, if you have unrigid fixed string, you want to use a carbide uncoated tool first and do all your roughing first. And then lastly, leave about 30 thou on the wall and come in with, say, like a PCD cutter. Take the full depth and go all the way around and finish up your part. What people tend to do is they tend to either step down too many times with the tool and then they end up wearing it out. So that's for unrigid fixturing. If you have a very rigid fixture, then you can use a straight PCD. So you can make your slot all the way around the part and cut it to net finish in one pass. So that's going at a depth of cut of one and a half times, di one and a half times diameter. So uh, let's see, it's for trimming pocketing. Uh, so solid carbide, your, your main disadvantage is you don't get the tool life, but you do get that shock resistance. So the diamond coated routers, they're very good. They actually um, give you good tool life. However, that diamond is only on there, it's bonded on itself. So you do, like then again, if you don't have rigid fixturing, that diamond has a tendency to chip or flake off because it's very hard, it's pure diamond. So really you want to use a diamond tool for uninterrupted cuts. Uh, a drilling application is perfect because it's never interrupted. It's always, you have straight tool pressure all the way down. The best tool to use is your PCD router because it does have very good shock resistance, but it's also up very sharp, whereas a diamond coated tool does have a rounded cutting edge. You do want a sharp edge when cutting these materials and, uh, and you, you get very good tool life. They do cost more than say like a straight carbide, but you'll get 10, 20 times the life. So here's a video on the PCD router. Uh, you're running at about a thousand uh, surface feet, 10,000 RPM at 80 inches a minute. It's about a fourth out chip load. So notice we are making chips, we're not creating dust. So here's that slide again, shock, versus, shock resistance versus wear resistance. So the next thing is your coolant, and it's really dictated by your customer. Some customers don't want you to use any coolant, uh, some customers don't mind. Uh, but you can use either a mist, which is a good option. You can use a chilled air or shop air. Uh, you can run it dry if you needed to. Uh, you have sometimes they don't let you run it dry because then you get dust all over the shop and then there's hazard issues. So we're back to uh, to getting the best tool life. Is always make sure you're running at the the right RPM. What we see a lot of is our customers running a tool at too high RPM and too low of a chip load, which will really burn up the tool a lot faster than you need to. So look, when, when you're doing the cut, first of all, always either look on our website or in the book, it'll give you speeds and feeds on, on the materials that you're using. And when you do run the tool, just make sure you're creating a good chip. You're not creating that dust and, um, and pre-wearing the tool. So here's some speeds and feeds, your typical RPM or surface footage is about 600 to 800 and you're about 40 to 80 inches per minute so and uh, we're also at 100 or one and a half times the diameter of the tool depth per pass if you take too many passes say you only go half diameter or even quarter diameter deep per pass you're only going to be using a little bit of that tool 
and you'll be using that that little bit so many times that eventually that's going to wear out. So when you're handling the tools, you really don't want to use micrometers or calipers to measure the diameter because you'll end up nicking it. Then again, these tools are very hard, very fragile, uh, so you really want to use either like a shim stock or the best thing to use is laser mics. If you can, if you have those available to you. So different geometries you can get. Um, the most common is an up shear. With the vacuum table, sometimes it's not that desirable because, of course, you'll be pulling up on the part, and then uh, the vacuum will have a hard time keeping the part down. Uh, what you want to do is either use a down shear. Uh, if you have good chip evacuation, what that will do is push down on the part and keep, you, keep the part on the table for you. Or a straight flute, which is very good um, to use because it neither pulls up or pushes down. Such as your PCD tool, those are straight fluted tools. And then there's also the compression routers, and you'll see some up here. We have some that are up shear, down shear, and basically the bottom half pulls up and then the top half pulls, pushes down and you'll get those neutral forces. So uh, basically you want to look at the, your fixturing, you want to look at the tools, the rigidity, and uh, of course don't forget your machine, the rigidity of your machine, your tool holders, uh, and, and how you program the part. So thank you guys for coming.